Now, if anyone thought the American Secretary of State was going to tell the Israelis to stop dropping their bombs on Lebanon, they were wasting their hopes. She did no such thing in Jerusalem today. The invasion continues unabated despite the clear evidence of civilian casualties. Tonight, there are reports that at least four UN observers have been killed by an Israeli airstrike in southern Lebanon. Let's start tonight by going to Tyre in southern Lebanon and our correspondent there, Fergal Key. Now, what more can you tell us, Fergal? Jeremy, what we're told is that sometime in the middle of this afternoon, an Israeli airstrike uh, dropped a bomb right on top of a UN observer position close to the Israeli border. Uh, we're told that throughout the afternoon there had been something of the order of 14 strikes on or around that position, but this final one hit the bunker in which four unarmed observers uh, were sheltering. Uh, they're still buried under the rubble as far as we know, and the UN will only tell us that there have been casualties. What are likely to be the consequences, Fergal? Uh, I mean, I think anybody who has observed Lebanon and South Lebanon over the years will, will tell you that there will be uh, naturally immediate protest and condemnation from the UN. The Israelis will, will then give their version of the story tomorrow. They will obviously deny that they deliberately targeted uh, the UN, but I suspect matters will go on, much as we've seen them going on for the past two weeks. There will be temporary outrage, but the shelling will continue. The attacks which are killing civilians will continue. And, of course, the Hezbollah rocket strikes on Israel will continue. There is a kind of grim logic to this. Both sides seem to be locked in a mortal embrace, which will go on um, until they feel that they're at a point where they can have a political settlement. Fergal, thank you. Well, Condoleezza Rice is now in Rome with European and other foreign ministers to see if they can mould some sort of proposal for some sort of peace deal. But with each of the major players in this conflict pursuing their own long-term strategic goals in the region, can an agreement really be reached? Here's Robin Denslow. It was another day of attacks and shuttle diplomacy. Two weeks on, Israeli forces were still moving into southern Lebanon, where they plan a no-go zone for Hezbollah until an international force arrives, while their planes bombed Beirut. But the incursion still failed to stop Hezbollah's rocket attacks on the Israeli city of Haifa. And as the conflict continues, differing visions for the region's future are becoming more clear. What do the major players hope to see in a new Middle East? Long-term aims vary widely across the region, of course, and there's often a clash between popular feelings in the Arab world, where support for Hezbollah has been helped by images of the destruction in Lebanon, and the aims at government level, where Hezbollah enjoy rather less support. The key player, clearly, is the United States, and today Condoleezza Rice continued her visit to the region explaining that the aim for America is a long-term solution. We cannot return to a status quo ante in which uh, extremists at any time uh, can decide to uh, take uh, innocent life hostage again by using uh, their rockets or using uh, their capabilities. And that is why we have, and the President, President Bush, has talked about an enduring uh, ceasefire, an enduring uh, cessation of violence. But the protests, when Condoleezza Rice visited Ramallah, were a reminder that many Palestinians are angered by America's failure to restrain Israel and regard Hezbollah as heroes. Hezbollah actually represents an idea as much as it does a military force. And in order to get rid of them, they're actually increasing popular support throughout the region for the stance that Hezbollah is taking. And ironically, the more that Hezbollah can continue to launch missiles against Israel, the more it becomes the champion of popular opinion in the region. That They alone, unlike the moderate Arab governments, have been able to stand up fairly forcibly to Israel. But for Israel, of course, the aim is clear. Like the Americans, they want to see the enforcement of UN Resolution 1559 that calls for the disbanding of Hezbollah as a militia and are determined to end the threat from the continuing Hezbollah rocket attacks. And Israel is determined to carry on the fight against Hezbollah. We'll reach out for them, we'll stop them, and we will not hesitate to take the most severe measures against those who are aiming thousands of rockets and missiles against innocent civilians for one purpose, to kill them. It was, ironically, the overthrow of Saddam that helped to change the Middle East by bringing far greater new power to Shia Muslims and the most dominant Shia state, Iran. 
Saddam was a Sunni Muslim, but since his overthrow, power has now shifted to Iraq's majority group, the Shias. Many of the Shia leaders in Iraq have close links with the Shia state of Iran, just over the border. While Iran, in turn, has developed close links with Syria, and through Syria has provided help for Hezbollah in Lebanon. There is a cohesion of interests, um, but that cohesion has been soldered, if you like, by the strength of opposition to both Israeli but increasingly US policy in the region and the US presence in the region. So what does Iran want from the Lebanon crisis? It's obviously helped by a major disturbance in the region that takes attention away from its nuclear programme and it's played a major role in the conflict by shipping weapons to Hezbollah. The weapons from Iran is going through Syria. I mean, there is no other way. The Iranian cannot ship their, their weapons with their Hercules uh, C-130. You know, it had to go to Damascus in the past and it has to go to Damascus in future. It's true that not all militant groups are Shia. After all, the Palestinian Hamas government is Sunni. But the conservative, predominantly Sunni Arab states, Saudi Arabia, Egypt and Jordan, are clearly concerned by the Shia revival and the increasingly dominant role of Iran. So finally, what do the Saudis want? They clearly like to end the Iran-Hezbollah axis and it seems they'll put pressure on Syria to stop acting as a link. Now they realise they have to make sure that the Saudis are satisfied from their policy, the Egyptians are satisfied, because these two countries, as well as Jordan, they have very close relation with Washington. So they are still able to convince Washington to accept Syria as a partner or as a player, major player in the area. Tonight, Condoleezza Rice is in Rome, preparing for tomorrow's international meeting on the crisis. But Syria and Iran are not invited. Well, I'm joined now from...